Hello, this is Wolfman Joe, and my partner is Ricky Bearheart, and I'm going to discuss on this day in history as written by History Channel. On this day in 1814, Francis Scott Key pens a poem, which is later set to music, and in 1931 becomes America's National Anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. The poem, originally titled Defense of Fort McHenry, was written after he witnessed the Maryland Fort being bombarded by the British during the War of 1812. He was inspired by the sight of a lone U.S. flag still flying over Fort McHenry at daybreak, as reflected in the now famous words of the Star Spangled Banner and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. We will discuss about the War of 1812 on this podcast. Now, Ricky, take it away. Uh, I am looking at a uh, looking at a story from a uh, thing today in history. It's an app. Uh, today in history, the Soviet probe Luna 2 crashes onto the moon, becoming the first man-made object to reach it. Luna 2 E1A series was the second of the Soviet Union's Luna program spacecraft launched to the moon. It was the first spacecraft to reach the surface of the moon, and the first man-made object to land on another celestial body. On September 14, 1959, it successfully landed east of Mare Iberium, near the craters Aristides, Archimedes, and Autolycus. The Autolycus is, uh, I believe it's the word means Prince of Thieves. Association to Al Qadir, the Green Man. Um, it's a very fascinating piece of history back when there was a space race, uh, back when we were competing as superpowers uh, to, you know, go up among the stars and do these things. And imagine how we felt first Sputnik and now, and now that, you know. Um, and it makes you wonder about that space race and what that was really all about. For those who are tuning in and listening to this podcast, this is Spiritus Holographica. On this show, we discuss about things that happened to stay in history, and we discuss what happens if. This happened alternately in another parallel world. Uh, he means the uh, he means the parallel uh, variations, uh, alternate continuums, um, and it's it's the implication behind it is, is that there's different uh, there's different layers of possibility that occur between decisions. And that certain decisions apparently carry such gravity that if they were made only a little different, they'd have a butterfly effect and change vast courses uh, throughout the world. For all of you who don't know what the butterfly effect is, you have a smartphone, you can look that up. The implication is, is that um, every little decision maybe has a great lever of weight. An influence. Yeah, it's like, let's just say, what happens if Francis Scott Key was not on that boat ride that one day, and I uh, went to Baltimore about four years ago, and I was on that boat ride. So, not the same boat ride he was on, but as they were dictating that 
he was writing that poem, and he didn't know which side was going to win that war. What happens if the British won the war? Then what happens when America takes place? Yeah, well, such is the nature of war. Consider the Red Shield and Napoleon. Uh, consider, uh, you know, the many different conflicts. How if things had gone slightly different? Incredible changes. I mean, World War II, the Eastern Theater, the bombing of uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. There's a million projected casualties of American dead. And I don't think either one of us would have been born had they not dropped those bombs, as horrific as that was. Because I don't know if your family was fighting during that time, but my family was in that war. My grandfather specifically was supposed to go into Japan. So he certainly would have been among the over a million uh, of, of forecasted death. So the war is a horrifying enterprise. Yeah. Uh, regardless of what's going on, it should be avoided, not uh, not promoted. Oh. Yeah, so, um, this is Spiritus Holographica. I certainly welcome to be uh, brought on here. And what, what are your credentials, Ricky? Well, um, it's easy to say. Ever since I was little, I wanted to be a, uh, a ghostbuster, and I've always had a very deeply spiritual side. Um, I'm an emissary from the Oak Enough Network, where we have three different podcast uh, channels dedicated to this sort of material. Um, I, I believe in a non-materialist, materialist actuality, uh, the many unseen things that are behind our senses, um, I, I, I don't think they're unreal. Um, and I think that a show like this that's uh, putting forth the nature of parallel verses and, you know, alternate continuums of time is not only an interesting thought experiment, but appeases to my sense of the paranormal because there's been so many there's been so many different talks uh, that I've looked into. A long story short, I, I read scriptures, I read accounts, uh, mythic history, and uh, it's not that there's a conspiracy. It's that uh, the conspiracy is that there's not a conspiracy. I mean, Alexander the Great saw a UFO. Um, Christopher Columbus saw a UFO. Yes. It's in their records. All right. Um, there's all sorts of strangeness. Now, I did a lot of research. I read a lot of different uh, books. Um, and I've been all over YouTube. I could recommend channels to anyone who wants to look into this sort of thing. I'm into the paranormal and into paranormal phenomenology and UFO research and all sorts of things. But in this particular case, on this channel, what I hope to bring to the table is uh, my studies of awareness. I've studied awareness, consciousness, uh, that is to say, wakefulness versus dreams. Um, yes. our senses, our waking senses versus our, our sleeping senses. The two eyes versus the, the one eye, the third eye. See, what I hope to bring to the table in this podcast of Spiritus Holographica is one, I have always had an interest in topics such as time travel, such as hologram, holographic reality, and also parallel universe reality, such as what happens if an alternate reality happens and takes place. Now, when you say holographic reality, what are you referring to? A 
holographic reality could be something where you could be sleeping at night and then what they may call hallucination or whatever can be a hologram. But you don't know. It could be either or. It's the fine line. It's like no one can actually tell you know this. You know. Are you talking about the nature of reality itself or the ebb and flow of consciousness in and out of sleep? Consciousness in and out of sleep, I would say. So you're talking about the editing phases between wakefulness and unconsciousness? Yes, yes, yes. So when you say hologram, you're referring to the editing process of nature? Yes. And that's, that's, that's not a bad handle to put on it, certainly. Because not only do individuals have consciousness, awake and sleep, but whole civilizations are awake and sleep. Like the Dark Ages, the amnesiac ages of prehistory, which obviously exist, but we don't have a record of them. You, 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 you think about it. You know, we're in the year 2018. Supposedly. At least that's, yeah, that's the written... That is the consensus, yes. However, I'm a firm believer that this earth is a heck of a lot older than just 218 years. Even even the date before Christ, I think, was... 2008, 100 years. Was a lot. Well, yeah, I, I, well, sure, I mean... However... However, there's two kinds of realities. There's the earth that was there for how many years, for billions of years. And then there's the recent earth that came like 6,000 years ago. When there was a collision and everything else and something like that. Uh, what collision are you referring to? I am referring to the collision of one of the planets, as Zachariah Sitchin put it in one of his books. That something happened when there was a planet. If, if, does that does that fall within the six thousand year timeline? I thought Sitchin made it where it was a lot further back than that. I think it was further back, but I'm not sure about the date. Well, yeah, um, yeah. See, I think that both he and Vilikovsky both say that it's a lot further back than that. Yeah. Um, the history and dating of the Earth is an interesting topic, but it's all about the metrics that you're using. I mean, if you use solar years, if you use great years, as in the zodiac, you can measure it all different kind of ways. It's all temporality. Um, these numbers have very little value to us because it's insane how I, short-lived we are. I, I mean, it's like we're short-lived and it's like, let's just say, there's artifacts that look recent in, in older fossil, like millions of years. It's uncanny. I know where you're getting at. But there's so many people that have a hysteria, a materialist hysteria, or a uh, Darwinian superstition that keeps them from accepting these out-of-place artifacts, which I've seen pictures of. Now, I've never, I've never been in the presence of them, so it's a third hand. But do I believe that that could be the case? Yeah. How could I not? Why would I be arrogant yeah. enough to think that a world that's millions of years old might not have had other civilizations on it before ours. Possible. But again, through the prism of certain philosophies and the scientific orthodoxy, as I call it, such things, they look at you with derision as if you're, you're crazed. Yes. But, even though the objects exist. But the nature of this podcast is 